I joined the Caltech faculty in 1983. Dick Feynman was 65 at the time, just a couple years older than I am now, and he was still very active intellectually. We had some common interests in elementary particle physics, so we had a lot of fun talking about science in those days. And it happened that during my first year at Caltech, Feynman was teaching for the first time a course he had developed on the potentialities and limitations of computing machines. As we heard from Michelle, he had been fascinated by computation since his days at Los Alamos. And in the 1980s, Feynman was developing a new vision, what he called a universal quantum simulator. Nowadays, we usually call it a quantum computer. Feynman foresaw, back in the 1980s, as few did at the time, the dawning of a new age in physics. And now, years later, technology is catching up with Feynman's dream. So what is a quantum computer? It's a computer that processes information using principles of quantum physics that were discovered in the 20th century. And you might think that means it's a computer much like the one you have now, only much, much faster and much, much smaller. But that's not the right way to think about it at all. Quantum information is nothing like the information we're used to thinking about. Quantum is different. And what's so different about it? An ordinary computer processes bits, where a bit could be a switch, which is either on or off. And a quantum computer processes what we call quantum bits, or qubits, where, like a bit, a qubit can be realized physically in lots of different ways. It could be carried by a single atom, or electron, or a particle of light, or a more complicated object like a cold circuit in which many electrons are moving. So an ordinary computer processes bits, a quantum computer processes qubits. What's so different about that? Well, the thing that makes qubits really different from ordinary bits and a quantum computer very different from an a, uh, ordinary computer is what we call quantum entanglement, from which one entangled evening gets its name. Entanglement is the word that we use to describe the characteristic correlations among the parts of a quantum system, which are very different from the correlations we're used to thinking about. You can think about it this way. Suppose we imagine a book which is 100 pages long, and each of 100 people read one page of that book, so each one knows 1% 1 of the content of the book. And then later on, during the intermission, we meet in the lobby and everybody talks about the page that they read. And then everyone will be able to reconstruct the full 100-page book. But quantum is different. If that's a quantum book, which is written in qubits instead of ordinary bits, and if those qubits are very highly entangled with one another, then if you look at one of the pages of the book, then you won't see any information at all, just random gibberish. And if each of 100 people read a different page and then later we get together to talk about what we've read, we'll still know almost nothing about what's in the book. That's because for the quantum book, the information isn't printed on the individual pages. The information resides almost entirely in how the pages are correlated with one another. That's the characteristic feature of quantum entanglement. And what's so interesting is that these quantum correlations are extremely complex. So if I wanted to describe to you, using ordinary bits, the information content of just a few hundred qubits, I would have to write down more bits than the number of atoms in the visible universe. So it'll never be possible, even in principle, to write that description down. And that's what fascinated Feynman. He reasoned that if we can't even write down using bits the information content of a few hundred qubits, then maybe by processing the qubits, we'd be able to do things that an ordinary computer would never be able to do. It took a while for the world to appreciate how deep and powerful that idea is. And even now, we don't fully grasp all the implications. Now, when Feynman first started thinking about quantum computers in the 1980s, we didn't have the technology to control qubits. But now we do. 
So we're in the early stages of putting together systems with many qubits, which will have remarkable properties. We're just beginning the exploration of a new frontier of physics, the entanglement frontier. Now, building a quantum computer is one of the great challenges facing 21st century science and technology. It's as difficult as it is exciting. We're never going to succeed except by pooling together the expertise of people coming from many different fields, physical science, mathematics, computer science, engineering. And tonight we have two of the people who are leading the charge. Experimental physicist Dave Weinland is as adept as anyone on Earth when it comes to controlling qubits. Computer scientist Chris Desfore heads the Quantum Architectures Group at Microsoft Research. Krista is the one without the beautiful mustache. And here she is. <laughs> 